You are literally training an AI to help you play better golf. Hard sticks and hacks. This week we got a huge update for you that I'm really excited about. So I'm going to walk you through the brand new round summary and some of the improvements we've made to the Tangent app. Let's go ahead and fire it up. We're going to dive into a recent round that I played here at Waterview just to show off the features. So first thing you'll notice is our history is completely changed with your strokes gained right there so that you can scroll through and very quickly see how you performed each day. See if there's one that's interesting that you want to dive into. You can switch that over to by course, of course, and then you can see your strokes gained, how you perform course by course by course. You might look for a course that you struggle with. In this case, let's go look at my last round at Waterview. If you click on it, we got a new summary page that quickly shows you the scorecard and then lets you dive into whatever you want to do, whether that's seeing the detailed scorecard with friends, if you played with friends, or whether that's seeing the full shot by shot. One thing that you'll notice in this case, since I played with a buddy of mine, Brady, I can quickly toggle back and forth between my shots and his shots throughout the entire round to see how each of us performed on each hole. If I hit the card, I've got a shared scorecard between me and Brady. The new friends mode is fixed and improved, so play with your friends, get them to play and compete. I'm gonna show you some cool features in the round summary as well. When you get done playing and you exit and you save, you're gonna be taken to our brand new round summary. And this has been completely rethought to add some intelligence and AI behind it to guide you through exactly what you need to do to get better so that you understand your golf game better than ever before. You'll see your scorecard at the top. Like always, you've got a bunch of tabs there where you can switch between our AI coach and diving into specific sections of your game. But let's start with the AI coach. It all starts with strokes gain. So in this round summary, it's showing you how I performed and showing you that what I mostly struggled with was approach. If I tap on anything in the plot, it'll give me more information on that. So this is my strokes gained approach performance. Bars to the left are a weakness. Bars to the right are a strength. This is clearly a weakness for me, losing 4.1 strokes to my reference. Your reference is configurable in the app. You set it up when you first logged in. I compare myself to an elite amateur, uh, but you can go into your filters at any point in time and change what you're comparing yourself to. So I struggle with approach. Cool thing. Now, instead of relying on you, the user, to go navigate all the data and figure out what that actually means, you can just toggle through the coach screens and it'll explain it for you. So I struggle with approach. Next, it breaks down that 4.1 strokes I lost in approach in a different categories that I can focus my practice on. In this case, that's distance control, direction, and mistakes. Mistakes are when you hit shots into bunker, recovery, or penalty situations. In general, those tend to be course management uh, types of issues where you didn't give yourself enough room to miss based on your current skill level. But so if we dive into that, I really struggled with directional misses on this particular day at Waterview, losing my 4.1 strokes to an elite amateur. Again, I can click on any of these and it'll explain to me what that means. And if I hit next, it'll take me to the next level of the drill down. It said that I struggled with direction. Here we go. We're seeing my approach misses shown by where they are relative to my target and I tended to miss left and right, and I tended to get most penalized when I missed left and right. So if I click on the right-hand side where I had 22% of my misses on this day, it'll show that I lost 2.4 strokes when I missed to the right. So that's something I need to be aware of, and I might want to factor that into my practice to really work on aim and alignment to make sure that I'm not biased in one particular direction. In this case, I clearly showed a bias to the right. You can click on any of these to get more information about the different uh, directions you might miss, but it's already guided me down. Approach is my problem, I tend to miss left to right, and right is my worst miss. If I go next, if I did track any of my strike quality, it'll show it here. You know, one of the things I like to do, particularly when I hit bad shots, is track where I missed on the face. Uh, that's a skill that you have to develop, but it helps me understand, you know, when the ball striking is not as good, why is it not as good? So that I can focus on the right things to improve that. Maybe that's getting closer to the ball. Maybe that's the lie angle of my clubs. That's the coaching section. It's guided me right through the most important thing that I could do this week, which is focus on approach game and focus on direction and aim. So if we follow that down, that'll lead directly into our practice suggestions, which is the next area. And it's going to show me that I could do an approach combine to start working on that distance control and direction. Um, I might add that to my to-do list. It'll walk me to the next one, which is approach aim, of course, trying to avoid missing left and right. I can add that to my to-do list. And it'll walk me through as many of these as I may or may not want to add to really focus on my approach game. Beyond practice suggestions, the system is now learning how I play. And it's learned a lot about me as I have a whole bunch of rounds in this system. So I can go look at AI caddy suggestions. And what this is gonna show me is my dispersions and distances club by club and give me the option to update the AI caddy with new information. So the caddy's saying, hey look, 
currently I have my driving dispersion set to 67 yards, right? That's how much room left and right I need to safely hit a driver. But I've been driving the ball really well, and I mean really well. So it's suggesting that I move that to 38 yards, meaning I can fit my driver in some pretty tight spots. Now, this is a case where I know I've been driving very well. I'm not sure if it's sustainable, and maybe I don't want to accept this particular recommendation. I want to stay safe with the 67 yards, so I might decline this particular recommendation and move on. But with my 4 Hybrid, I know it's a little bit opposite. I struggle to control that. It moves a lot in the air, and it's showing me that my current dispersion is 47 yards, but it actually should be closer to 57 yards. I can see that on the left with some of those wild shots. So I might accept that recommendation and it'll update my caddy for the next time I play. You can go through these, but the nice thing is after each round, you will get AI caddy suggestions on how to improve your caddy. You are literally training an AI to help you play better golf, but it get, does give you the option to override or to not accept it so that you can make sure you're comfortable with what's being applied when you're playing golf. Now, since this is a relatively new feature and now this has all been consolidated into one place, the first time you play around, if you've played a lot of rounds with us, there might be a lot of suggestions. But as you move forward and it learns and applies those, there will be fewer and fewer suggestions with each individual round that you play. Really cool that these are consolidated in one place and you actually get to see what our AI is doing and learning about you every single round. I think that's really, really cool. The next section would be uh, take a deeper look where you can dive into stats as deep as you want to go. But I want to show you the update that we just did with friend comparison. This is really cool. Since I played with a buddy in this round, I can tap friend comparison and it's going to go show our rounds side by side. I played with Brady. Uh, he shot an 89. I shot a 74. It'll show all of our strokes gain stats side by side compared to my reference. It'll show our distance, our driving, our approach game. It breaks down every little bit. So I can scroll through here and see how I compare to that buddy. And if that buddy's taking money off me in that Nassau, I can see where he's beaten me. So I can go focus on that and keep improving and vice versa. Brady might look at this after having played with me and say, hey, this is where I can get better to compete with Dallas. If you look at it overall from a driving perspective, he's doing okay, but he's maybe behind me a little bit on, on the approach side or even the putting side. Really cool to have that built right in. If you want to change from doing one round at a time, you can tap these different filters at the bottom to compare your last five rounds or your last 10 rounds even side by side. So if we go back, I don't want you guys to feel like I removed features that you previously had where you could drive into individual subjects like driving, approach, short game, or putting. So all of those are quickly available either by tapping on the main screen and saying take me to approach or by tapping on the bar at the top between driving short game putting to go dive into whatever you want so here the same way that I showed you with approach where it breaks down my performance we're doing the same with driving so I actually gained 1.2 strokes on an elite amateur driving and it shows I did that because I was long I was longer than a typical elite amateur on this day and directionally I didn't get into a lot of a trouble hit quite a few fairways and then mistakes I only made point three mistakes. Basically, I hit it into one fairway bunker off the tee. Otherwise, I was never in trouble. So that's a good day driving for me, but we can keep diving down. It'll show my distance. So this is where I told you I was longer than an elite amateur. That's why I gained for distance. Yeah, an elite amateur on average drives at 267. Today, my median drive was 272. So a little bit longer than what an elite amateur is doing. If I keep going down the path, I tended to miss left with the driver 28%. I almost never missed right, and I hit 71% of my fairways. So that's why my direction was so good, because I hit more fairways than even a pro would hit. Keep driving down. I can see that the one mistake that I did make was I drove into one fairway bunker, and that did cost me a bogey. So that's something that I can work on. That was a strategy mistake where I hit the ball a little further than I wanted into a fairway bunker I shouldn't have reached. I can keep going. It'll show me my drive and dispersions. I could even dive down by club if I wanted to. Uh, again, if I would have tracked strike, that would be here. And then lastly, I've got my trend. How am I doing round for round for round to see if I'm actually improving or if I'm declining and need to spend more time on driving. We already kind of went through approach, so I'll skip that. But there is more additional detail here if you click on the approach section directly versus the coach. I've got the short game section. I gained a lot here. I did very well, except for out of the sand. It'll break that down from a proximity performance. Again, go as deep as you want to go. And lastly, there's putting. Cool stuff in the putting update, right? It's going to show that I lost two and a half strokes putting to an elite amateur. The greens weren't very good, so there's my excuse. But if I look at it, most of that was lost with medium putts, putts between uh, six and 30 feet. Uh, I didn't make any of those, and I had a lot of 11 and 12 footers, so that already makes sense with what I noticed on the golf course, but this breaks it down to where if I'm going to go spend time practicing, 
I might practice those medium putts a little bit more than I than I have been. If I go to next, it'll kind of show that, right? Uh, that little gray box actually highlights the section I need to work on here. So I made all of my putts under six feet, but I didn't make a single putt over seven feet. So that's something that I might want to work on. I had a lot of good chances on this particular day, but it points me directly to what I need to go work on. If I hit next, uh, it'll show you kind of some traditional stats, how many putts I had, that type of thing, if you're used to it. And if I look at this, yeah, average PGA Tour player makes 72 feet of putts in a round. I made 36 feet of putts. You can do the quick math. That's two feet per hole. Not good. Uh, if I hit next, I do track my green reading with putt details turned on. I highly suggest that if you want to get better. But if I glance at this, yeah, I missed low and short all day. I underread it. Part of that is these greens were very bumpy and the ball's bouncing and, and not really staying on line. Again, that's my excuse. But this tells me I need to be aware that I tend to miss low and short. Let's work on that. And then lastly, I've got my putting trend here. So that's the new round summary in a nutshell. A uh, lot of information here, but now it's kind of guiding me through that. I got the friend comparison. I've got the AI caddy suggestions. I got practice suggestions. I know what I need to do to get better. And it's all in one place consolidated and much easier to navigate than it was before.